was the top? Right. What? 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 Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Beyond the Listing. I'm Shannon, a recruiter here at Better Homes and I'm here with a very special guest, Connor. Very special guest indeed. Hi everyone, I'm Connor. I'm the branch sales manager for our Motor City office. Perfect, it's really nice to have you here with me. I just wanted to talk about your journey and how you came from the UK to Dubai. What was you doing before you relocated? So I was an estate agent in the UK. I started that at the age of 19. I dropped okay. out of school at 17, did some traveling. Didn't really know what I was going to do in my life. Mm. Um, my parents were, and grandparents have always been around property, buying, selling, yeah. uh, renting out properties, doing them up. Uh, and then I just stumbled across a job, a big estate agent in the UK, Hart. Okay. Um, so I went in there as a junior trainee negotiator. Worked there for three years, achieved what I wanted to, which was to buy a house in my yeah. hometown of Ipswich. And then I was like, what's next? Didn't really want to stay at home, wanted to get out and do something different. Yeah. And then one of our competitors actually approached me on LinkedIn. I went to their recruitment event in the UK, um, decided to move here. In the time between deciding and actually moving, the recruiter, who I became quite good friends with, yeah. he left and joined Better Homes. Okay. So then I had a bit of a predicament decision to make. Yeah. Did my research and decided that Better Homes was definitely the better place for me. Yeah. And uh, now I've been here for pretty much five years. Wow, and Better Homes is the first company that you joined being in Dubai. Yeah, I moved to Dubai and two days later I started working at Better Homes and wow. been here ever since. So you started in leasing and now you're a sales manager. What did you do and how did you get to, to where you are now? Blackmail. <laughs> Who was you blackmailing? Everyone. Everyone above me. No. <laughs> so I started off in leasing. I did leasing for a few months. We went into COVID, moved to sales, yep. did that for a year and a bit, senior sales. Then I got made area manager for the Bio Hills to Mac Hills, where I had my own team in those areas. Yeah. Um, and then just recently I've been promoted to branch sales manager. Oh, amazing. And obviously with commission only, there's so many ups and downs. You've got deals falling through and you could be relying on that, that payment. Um, what would you say that keeps you motivated in this role? I think um, commission only obviously is something you really need to wrap your head around at the start. But I also think people struggle with motivation when they compare themselves to others. Yeah. If you look at others that are doing really well, that should be a motivation. I think some people get a bit down when they see others doing so well and they're not doing so well. Yeah. I think one important thing, particularly when you're in commission only, is you need to remember that you're only competing against yourself. You need to be the best version of yourself. Yeah. Once you start to succeed, then you need to be smart with your money because your pay will be different every month. That's yeah. a fact. There might be some months where you don't get paid, where a deal takes longer to transfer or there's mm -hmm. complications or it might fall through as you said yeah so it's important to be sensible with your money invest save uh, make sure you have six months of money ahead of you so you're not stressing too much and panicking about where the next deal is coming from that allows you to be the best best version of yourself so you mentioned that you have to plan your finances ahead of time and um, to make sure that you can deal with the commission only and i work on a salary and i can't even do that myself so how do you deal with that when i first came here i was staying on a friend's landing i was basically okay. sleeping on a sofa bed yeah. for the first couple of months i used to eat like 10 dirham takeaways and that was a treat otherwise i was in instant noodles i probably went a little <laughs> bit over extreme yeah. but that experience for the first few months like taught me how to be very careful with the money yeah um but then obviously as time progresses as you make more it does become difficult because i see a lot of people some of my friends they get a big paycheck and they spend a yeah. big percentage of it from the start you see it a lot of the time in dubai i feel like people get wrapped up in the dubai lifestyle Fact, yeah that as soon as they see some commission, they go out and spend it all at once, and then they're back to the beginning again. So what did you spend your first commission on? My first deal was in Jamira Park. It took me, it took me about a month, which is longer than most people. Yeah. So I was a bit of a slow star, which still annoys me, actually. Um, <laughs> my first commission, I think, was like 8,000 on the board. Okay. So about 4,000 in my pocket. And I think I treated myself to like a 15 dirham takeaway rather than 10. Love that. No, you I, improved. <laughs> yeah. No, I still, I didn't, I didn't really treat myself at all. Yeah. I just Did saved, you save banked, it? Yeah. Got ready, yeah. How long would you say that it took you to start consistently earning commission every month? It's hard to say because I moved from leasing to sales very quickly. Yeah. I kind of figured out leasing, knew what I needed to do. I didn't yeah. absolutely smash it, but I knew what I needed to do. Yeah. Then I moved to sales where I didn't know anything again. So for me, it was a little bit longer. And then COVID happened. So I had yeah. like nine months of inconsistency where I was getting money here and there. But I think for like the average decent broker who sets themselves up properly, yeah. after like three months, they should know what they're doing, whether it's leasing or sales. And then the next six months, they should see some consistency. Yeah. And year one should be like, you've kept your head above water. Making sacrifices in yeah. your personal life, yeah. You might go drink once a week, once every two weeks, or special 100%. occasions, yeah. not too many parties. But then year two, after you've completed one year, that's where you can make some really, really decent money. Now that you're a big baller, what do you do with your money? <laughs> I'm definitely nowhere near a big baller. I spend my money quite sensibly still. I do yeah. party a little bit more often than I used to. I do travel a lot. I go back home like 
three or four times a year. Okay. Go on other holidays too, um, yeah. quite often. So I travel a lot. Uh, but I also invest. I bought a property last year in Dubai Hills, which okay, I sold this nice. year. Gonna soon make another investment, just waiting for the right one. Yeah. Um, put some money into crypto. I see a lot of my mates actually struggle with the saving aspect. They do the they do the big deal. They have a decent month. They spend it all. So yeah. for some of them, I've actually said to them, right, you've had a good month. Send me 50% of what you've made and I'll keep hold of it and I'll only give it to you if it's essential. What about you? What do you spend your money on? Clothes, Shein, Shein every month is becoming a bit of a bad habit, I'm not mm. going to lie. What are the top three things you've learned throughout your career with Better Homes? I think the most important thing is you need to always be learning. Like, no matter how good you get, you need to always be improving yeah. and like keeping an eye on what's going on, listening to people's conversations, just being observant to anything. Yeah. Um, and that leads into the second one, which is anyone you meet, Anyone you speak to could be an opportunity. Yeah, 100%. Every, every lead you receive, anyone you meet in a bar or in a cafe or in a mall, or every client you meet, someone might just have a studio they want to rent out, but they might also have 10 million worth of properties they want to sell. Even your yeah. friends. like Yeah. I, last year, I think I sold three properties to just like my very close friends. Oh, wow, did you? Yeah. So it just made me think, flip an egg, I just need rich friends. <laughs> Make rich friends and then... Yes. <laughs> 100%. And number three? Just always be competing with yourself. Yeah. Look at other people for motivation, but don't get Let down when other down. people are doing really well and you're not. Yeah. You're competing against yourself. Your only target is you need to just get better every day. Even I still do it sometimes. I'm, I'm scrolling on Instagram. Obviously, I follow a lot of brokers. Yeah. And I see someone on their stories. Every week, they sell something for 20, 25 million. And I think, Ugh. You've got high hopes to make so much commission in your first year, but... Sometimes it doesn't work out like that and it's really hard just to, you know, keep your focus when other people are doing amazing and you might not be. But with this job, it's, you know, you need to look at the future and what exactly. you can make out of it. It's, it's a patience game with real estate. You're not, it's not going to happen overnight. Even sometimes now after five years, and I've been reasonably successful, yeah. um, I still find myself doing it and I have to just reset myself and think, snap. Yeah. They're doing great. Great for them. Really happy for them. But use it but to I'm competing against myself you, and I have yeah. done well and I'm going to continue to do well. And yeah. brokers need to think like that as well. But that's the best mindset to have, mm. the mindset where you can just put everything aside. If a deal falls through, push it to the side and on to the next one. Mm. I think if you don't have that mindset, like me, if something bad happens, I'm thinking about that and I'm holding that to me for the rest of the month. Whereas with this job, you can't really do that. If something's not gone your way, you just have to forget about it and mm. move on. I think one of the most important attributes you have to have as a broker is you yeah. have to handle the highs and lows equally well yes. you see people when they close a big deal they go to the moon and they're yeah. so excited they're over the top also might be spending a load of money as we said um but you can't do that you need to stay balanced yes you should be happy yes you should celebrate but remember on to the next one all the time yeah. and it's the same with the lows people get stuck in a rut sometimes you need to always be balanced so you've been working in real estate for five years now with better homes and i'm sure you've got so many success stories Loads. but what kind of is the main one that stands out for you in your career the biggest success story <laughs> Um, for me, is seeing people come fresh off the plane yeah. from the UK or from anywhere else, and they've got no experience in real estate. They didn't have UK experience. Yeah. Um, Toby, who I mentioned earlier, he came from working in Barclays Bank. Okay. Here. No experience, not even any sales experience. Yeah. And now he's three years later. He's a senior sales broker. He's making more money than me. Yeah. And he didn't know anything. So helping someone like him and the rest of my team not know a thing and seeing them like. Geordie, I did a second grow. interview with. He was he was selling ticket sales. Yeah. Doing ticket sales in Tenerife and Ibiza. Never sold a house. Didn't know anything about real estate. Yeah. And now three years later, he's smashing it. So going from second interview in someone to seeing them. Be yeah, really successful. and that's what I see on my day to day, obviously, second in, uh, first interviews mm -hmm. to second interviews to offer. And I speak to so many people that don't have real estate experience, mm -hmm. but really it is about your mindset. If yeah. you've got the mindset, we can teach you the sales, the negotiation, mm -hmm. how to do, do the calls. But the mindset is what's going to make or break you in this field. So 100% I completely agree. So what's your best piece of advice you'd give to somebody that's looking to invest in Dubai? First thing I would say is they need to ask around people that they know in Dubai or their friends in Dubai yeah. or their family in Dubai or co-workers, anyone, who they've used when they've either rented or bought yeah. or sold and what kind of service they got from them. There's a lot of brokers here that won't really take your best interests. Yeah, 100%. Uh, they'll just think about the money. They will just sell you anything just to get a bit of commission in their pocket. So yeah, recommendations completely agree. So what's your future plans? Where do you see yourself in the next few years? I'm not really certain, to be honest. Uh, take each day as it comes and keep getting better every day, yeah. as I said earlier, which is something that I always try to do. Um, but I would like to a lot more wealthy yeah have a lot more investments and likewise. traveling a lot more yeah likewise what about you what's your plan um to become a housewife joking i would like to work up within the company and then hopefully my husband gets rich 
<laughs> and then become a housewife. Then become a housewife. Right. <laughs> and that's a wrap. I'm Shannon, your favourite recruiter, and this is Connor. And thank you for joining us on Beyond the Listing. Stay tuned for our next episode. I'm sure the next guest won't be quite as interesting as me. <laughs>